The trick with a topic like this is grabbing the people who already think they've heard every Viking survival secret ever recorded, then surprising them in the first 60 seconds. So if you're watching this on Iron Age Instincts, just hit that subscribe button now, because today we're going into a heating method so efficient, so brutally effective, that centuries later it was adapted by militaries and eventually banned for civilian use after the Second World War. That's not myth, not folklore, but a real technique built on the same principles our Norse ancestors had mastered long before electricity, long before metal stoves, long before insulation standards existed. This is one of those examples where old-world survival knowledge ended up being too good, literally too resource-efficient and too powerfully insulating, for governments to allow just anyone to deploy it. Now, let's get straight into the substance, because this method connects medieval Scandinavia, wartime Europe, and modern survival engineering in a way most people never expect. Let's begin with what the Vikings actually created, a heat retention system built on controlled oxygen flow and mass heating layers. One of the first misconceptions about Viking heating is that they simply relied on open hearths. That's true for daily life, but when they needed long-duration heat, whether on expeditions, in temporary shelters, or during winter storms, they used a technique far more sophisticated. They built low-oxygen, slow-burn heating pits combined with heavy thermal mass layering. This wasn't just a fire in a hole. The goal was maximizing radiant heat and minimizing fuel consumption. Archaeological finds from Scandinavia and Iceland show insulated pits lined with stone, turf and compacted earth. Heated stones were rotated in cycles, absorbing heat during the burn phase and releasing it steadily for hours afterward. If you've ever slept next to such a stone bank, you know the difference. Instead of a fire that flares, dies, and leaves you cold before dawn, you get a stable, even warmth, that lasts the entire night. This is the foundation of the technique that later became forbidden for civilian wartime use. Stone banking combined with oxygen-controlled beds of embers. Fast forward about a thousand years to early 20th century Europe. Fuel shortages during the First and Second World Wars, you see, led engineers to revive older heat retention methods, especially in mountainous regions where coal transport was, well, rather difficult. They discovered that a Viking-style mass heating pit when adapted into a sealed chamber with adjustable air intake, actually produced more stable heat than civilian stoves and used only a fraction of the wood. Now, this is where the band for civilians' part enters the story. Military engineers took that ancient concept and modified it into what became known as hyper-efficient trench heating chambers. They relied on the same logic the Vikings used. Heat stone, restrict oxygen, and trap radiant warmth in a layered environment. The result was a system that gave soldiers warm shelters without visible smoke plumes. Something that could, you know, reveal positions to enemy reconnaissance aircraft. After the war, governments in several regions restricted the civilian construction of these sealed, hyper-efficient chambers because they could allow people to circumvent fuel rationing rules, and more critically, they produced carbon monoxide risks if built incorrectly. The principle was sound. The danger, though, was that civilians were replicating them without the engineering oversight that made them safe. Heating pits that burned nearly smokeless and used almost no fuel were simply not allowed for unsupervised public use. Now, 
Let's discuss how the core Viking method actually works, and, well, why it produces such long-lasting heat. The system relies on three components, thermal mass oxygen control and sequential heat cycling. You superheat stones or dense ceramic material through an open burn. Then you reduce the oxygen flow drastically, letting the remaining coals smolder instead of flame. Finally, you bury or insulate the stone mass in layers of turf wool earth or even thick hide. The Vikings often placed sleeping platforms over these pits, using the rising radiant heat while eliminating open flame hazards inside enclosed structures. A well-made mass pit could heat a shelter for, oh, 12 to 18 hours. Some sagas even mention earth beds used during winter crossings, which line up with archaeological evidence of semi-mobile stone heating systems. Here is how someone today could apply this knowledge safely as a survival technique without recreating restricted wartime systems. If you ever need long-duration heat in the wilderness with minimal fuel, you can adapt the Viking fundamentals in a few steps. First, build a shallow pit and line it with stones that won't explode when heated. Second, create a strong initial fire to heat your stones thoroughly. Third, once the stones are hot and the fire burns down, limit oxygen by covering the embers with a controlled layer of earth or sand, leaving a small vent to prevent full suffocation. Fourth, Cover the entire structure with layers of natural insulation, turf, soil, hides, wool blankets, or whatever you have. You'll feel gentle, radiant warmth rising steadily for hours. It's ideal for emergency shelters or maintaining a temperature overnight without burning through your entire wood supply. This is not the band chamber system. This is the historical Viking approach done safely in the open with ventilation. It's low-tech, reliable, and honestly fuel-efficient. And if you study Viking longhouses, early Icelandic turf houses, and even Sami shelters, the continuity is obvious controlled heat, layered mass, and slow radiation. This matters for historians and survival enthusiasts because it ties ancient engineering to modern restricted wartime methods. Understanding this link gives you a clearer picture of Viking ingenuity. They weren't improvising with random fires. They understood heat retention, convection management and resource efficiency better than many civilizations of their era. And when later wartime militaries rediscovered the method, they proved its supremacy so thoroughly that the civilian versions were deemed too effective and too risky for unsupervised use. If you value historical continuity and practical survival knowledge, mastering this method connects you directly to a tradition that spans a millennium of cold weather engineering. If you want more deep research, forgotten survival methods and historically grounded techniques like this, subscribe to Iron Age Instincts and, well, share this video with someone who appreciates real knowledge, not recycled trivia.